All right, everyone, we're going to go ahead and give people a few minutes to go ahead and get settled in here. And um, as we go ahead and get settled in, then we'll go ahead and see if anybody has any questions. Um, it doesn't look like we have any pre submitted questions today, but we'll go ahead and give everybody a few minutes still so that way we can kind of get settled. All right, it does look like we have a few more people that joined us here. Um, my name is Ashley Beyer. I'm a senior sales engineer here at Decisions, and um, I'll be your host today for the Lunch and Learn. We don't have any pre-submitted questions. Do either of you guys have any um, questions you'd like to get answered today, or are we just here to go ahead and see what else we can learn inside Decisions? If you do have any questions, feel free to go ahead and raise your hand. You can also submit your question by typing on the chat or in the Q&A options here. All right, if you guys are typing out a question, feel free to go ahead and finish that guy there. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and kind of transition over. Um, we're gonna go ahead and look at CSV and Excel documents with Inside Decisions today. It's one of the projects that I've been working on here recently. And so I wanna go ahead and take a little bit of the spotlight to go ahead and dive into that a little bit more. So let me go ahead and pull up my other screen here for us. You should be looking at my studio now. We are gonna go ahead and get started today by creating out a flow. And this one is gonna be creating an Excel slash CSV inside of decisions. I'm pulling up kind of chat and Q and A in case anybody post over there. Um, so, when we are, and I'm going to be working on seven today, um, eight is just a little bit different, but some of the same steps are still going to be there for us. Um, if you're working on an older version, go ahead and let me know, and I can go ahead and try and see if we've got some of the same uh, aspects or features inside of your um, version as well. So, when we are coming through and doing a Excel document or creating a CSV document, you can actually have decisions do that for you. We're gonna come over the data here, open up our Excel and CSV, and then we can actually create a new Excel file here. Right here, we're gonna go ahead and connect the start step off of here. And then we're gonna go ahead and choose a file name. Now I'm gonna have this be a constant variable, and I'm just gonna go ahead and call this Ashley's Excel. The sheet name, again, I'm just gonna have it be a constant variable here, and we're gonna call this my workbook. Okay, that goes ahead and creates for us today. If we wanted to go ahead and set values, I just keep scrolling down inside of the subcategory of this folder here. And I can actually go ahead and expand this out a little bit so I can read everything that's inside of here. I'm gonna go ahead and start with set values in row. So within my Excel document here, we're gonna go ahead and pull in Ashley's um, Excel file. So this right here is that create new Excel document. The file type, we're going to change this to constant so we can actually choose for it to be an Excel document here. The workbook number we're going to keep as a constant. Um, I see we might have another attendee. If you have any questions for today, feel free to go ahead and either raise your hand or submit in either the chat or the Q&A. Otherwise, today we're just going to go through some of the projects that I've been working on here recently. Um, we're going to go ahead and set this to be a constant for the row to start on zero and the column's gonna start at the first value. Now our new values, this is gonna be where we're able to go ahead and actually input some information. Uh, Alex, you've got a question for me? Uh, yeah, I, you? Okay, perfect. I, I got a couple of questions, uh, if you're all right with that. Yeah, go for it. Okay, so the first one I'm pretty sure is easy. I just don't know what I'm doing. Um, I'm using a fetch entity step to get values from a database uh, type. 
And um, I'm trying to figure out how to like uh, to write a clause that has um, uh, field value is equal to one or field value is equal to two or field value is equal to three and other field value is equal to other value. So like I, I've got the part, the or part by basically uh, just using the uh, same field type over and over again, you know, aliased, but um, when I, um, I want, I want to put the ors in a, in brackets kind of thing. So you've got it right now to where we've got the um, limiting fetch criteria, right? Yeah. Or so how, go, how did yeah. you set that up actually? Yeah, so I go in here and I choose the field name within my type and then I mm -hmm. put input uh, data alias and I say like because I've got a field that uh, you know has it's called an employee type and it can have uh, one of four values. So I'm interested in uh, in in getting uh, say two of the values. So I I do the fetch entity uh, yeah, so the company is equal to this and I I alias that. So um, so that I can reference it twice. But then I also want to, I wanna say that like, for example, in this case, it would be the company is equal to company one or the company is equal to company two and the company is in the state of Arkansas. Or sorry, actually. What are you the, wanting to do with that information later on? Are we pulling it in for assignments it's, it's or? Going into a, it's going into a drop down. So basically down. I'm trying to build a list of employees that uh, like, so all management employees, for example, but also all management employees whose status is active. So I've got managers, I've got directors, I've got supervisors. They all are part of manager of, of management and they all have a specific employee type, but I also want to make sure that I don't pick any management people that uh, have left the company whose status has been set to inactive. Okay, and are you on version seven? No, I'm on version six, one, eight, I think. Six, okay, okay. Because hmm. I was I was thinking to myself, um, like version seven or version eight, you'd be able to go ahead and get in there and do the active form flows. And so that might actually be easier if you're looking at a drop down version of it. Um, if we're wanting to go ahead and bring in multiple information like that. So I know once we start adding on too much here, especially when we're looking at the same field, um, it does start to get a little bit more entangled. Um, and so I, have you done a rule outside of the fetch entity where we go ahead and fetch all of maybe the company and then we go ahead and sort it out inside of a rule? Yeah, so this is the, that, that was kind of the uh, that was kind of where I got to. So I basically I used the fetch entities to get all of my management, and then I thought, okay, so what's the next step that I use to filter out those that are active? So that was kind of like uh, the point where I thought uh, I thought I thought I'll just do another fetch entities, and the input to the new fetch entities will be the output of the other fetch entities, but it actually doesn't allow you to do that. So no, you'd I have to probably build a list from the um, new the uh, result of the fetch criteria. You'd have to probably build a list from that, and then go ahead and take that new list and then filter it into the rule from there. Okay, so yeah, so I was just basically trying to figure out whether there were any uh, um, like kind of out of the box easy steps that would basically allow you to filter um, a type. You know, I mean, because I got to the point where, mm -hmm. okay, so it doesn't, it's not going to allow me to combine bracketed ors with ands because it uses the and to basically, you know, turn all the ors into ands. So basically, I thought, okay, so um, uh, then I got to the, okay, well, let's just use the next, another fetch entities. And then I got to the point where, okay, so that's not going to work. So I guess it seems to be that I'm going to have to filter this somehow. Um, and was kind of wondering what the best steps were to filter the output from a fetch entities. Yeah, I'm kind of going through um, the thought process kind of rattling off my head here. Um, I don't think a run report would do exactly what we need to. You almost need like a filter, like a collection filter step or maybe the rule can collection filter. 
It's a collection, so we could actually take the output of the fetch entities here, probably. Uh, and panelists, if you guys have a different thought track, go ahead and feel free to chime in at any point. I'm just kind of working through my thought processes here. I wonder if we could do that though, because this would be take our energy results here, set it up in here. Now um, that way we can go ahead and take. Um, are these accounts inside of decisions or is it just accounts? No, this is um, a this is a, a data type that I've created called uh, employees and it's okay. like a what is it called? A simple data structure or something like that? Uh, Have you tried this rule collection filter stuff yet? I haven't, uh, you know, because I kind of I, I, I did look at that and uh, and I, I mean, I brought it onto my page, but I just thought I was kind of hoping that there would be something uh, uh, easier. But again, it's like that's just because I don't I'm unfamiliar with this particular rule. That's okay. Um, so I think um, bringing this on and kind of looking at it, I think we can go ahead and fetch that simple data structure, um, filter it the first time with the managers, and then bring it over into this rule collection filter. When you talk about having those different brackets and having those like company um, equals company one, and then another bracket for the second company and so forth, um, I think inside the statement rule will be the best place to do this. So I think this might be exactly what you're looking for. Um, so I would go ahead and recommend trying this guy out because okay. if we could take the results of the special entities of your simple data structure there and have that be the input collection that then it's going to go through and filter out there. Okay. Yeah. Go ahead and try that out and um, say my uh, email is just ashley.buyer at decisions.com. So if that doesn't work, I'd love to go ahead and brainstorm or go ahead and jump in on the next lunch and learn and we can work through it together. Um, I don't remember when I'm going to be on next, but I can definitely go ahead and get with Maru and then go ahead and send you an email and let you know. Um, you did say this was the first question. Do you have anything else to rattle off? I do. Um, what else you got? Um, so one of the things that I'm noticing is that from a deployment point of view, I'm kind of using the URL to a, a page and also using the uh, and Chrome equals off. So that they don't, uh, you know, get the the um, input, uh, the inbox section of the of the um, of the display, right? There's that thing that says portal or studio, and there's got you know folders and inbox and all that sort of stuff. Mm -hmm. So by using the and Chrome equals off as part of the um, URL, that thing is supposed to disappear. And uh, so sometimes it does, but um, sometimes it doesn't. So I'm wondering, uh, like I kind of need uh, some way so that the users never see that area where your mouse is currently. Yeah, I was trying to see if I had a dashboard or something so that I can actually kind of show the panelists exactly what you're talking about. So what we can do up here at the top is just type in in Chrome equals off. And what should happen is it gets rid of all that extra stuff to where we get the actual landing page or the dashboard nice and big here. Um, you're saying that they still have the options here on the side panel to go ahead and shift through the inbox and et cetera? Yeah, so that's exactly what I'm looking for right there. But the problem is, is that when I actually publish that as a, as a URL, sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Meaning sometimes it shows up like this and sometimes it shows up like it was a second ago. I have a question for you. Have you ever noticed that the people are opening it in different browsers at all? Or is it always Google Chrome? Uh, yeah, I can't, uh, I don't know that. I mean, it happens to me and I only use Google Chrome. Okay. So that starts to limit in that factor there. Um, I feel like it's probably gonna be a, the fact that it happens sometimes and not other times, I feel like it's going to be some sort of like on the folder of the dashboard itself, a property. Um, I don't feel like it'd be permissions. Let me switch to studio here.
so I guess another way of looking at it is, is there a way to disable um, permissions to that area of the page? That Chrome equals off should go ahead and basically um, hide it and disable it. It shouldn't, it shouldn't work sometimes and not work other times. Um, so I feel like this is more so going to be a portal setting. Let me see. Yeah, so I mean, my, you know, my experience um, being a browser hater kind of thing, you know, this is uh, the kind of thing that you are regularly up against in browsers. Yeah, odd, odd, odd exceptions to the rule. And if we're getting rid of the, hmm. and this is um, just so that way everybody on the call knows too, um, inside of settings here, when we come down to portal settings, this is where we're actually able to go ahead and redo the logo up here. So instead of just having the decision studio, you can actually um, go ahead and add drone branding and styling right here. Um, but he doesn't want any sort of branding or styling for us. We just want it to go ahead and have the entire dashboard or landing page just zoomed in on. Yep. I feel like there is, or I have seen or been shown um, something that would go ahead and actually go ahead and um, have the Chrome off always turned on. Hmm. Okay, and I guess like a kind of a related question is um, mm -hmm. like when you right click on your inbox there or you right click uh, on the, any number of things you get uh, you can get right click actions right so how can you what what is controlling those uh, right click actions for like, like the, the sidebar over here like I just did yeah Personally, I don't know. I don't think I've ever contemplated the uh, right-click actions over here. Um, hmm, that's a good question. Um, user portal visibility, I guess we would hide and show this. So that might be, watch me get rid of my inbox. Yeah, I got rid of my inbox here. But if they only have studio access, then or I'm sorry, they don't have portal access, then it wouldn't matter either way. Interesting. I would have to go ahead and look at this um, a little bit more. Uh, I already reached out to the person who I think I've seen do it before, or at least show me. Um, he may actually be in the middle of another call right now. So I can definitely follow up with you, Alex. But I do feel like it's gonna be under the portal settings here. We might okay. have had right here, with the like custom URL. I feel like that was a good spot that we were at. Probably past it, you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you have the custom self-registration URL? And maybe that's just like um you given us your own like uh, host environment. Uh, no. So that is in system. I got system settings, and then you can drop down into the portal settings. And this is what I've been kind of scrolling through to see if we've got something where we can actually have the, uh, the Chrome off always on. I know it's here somewhere. I just don't remember the exact little spot for it. Uh, so, get Um, See so that customization stuff was like way at the bottom down here. Yeah, so, so custom self registration URL, I have nothing there. Okay. I'm wondering, and I may be completely off, but I'm wondering if this might be the spot 
let me go ahead and get with um one of my uh one of my uh coworkers here and let me go ahead and see if he's got any advice or if anybody else on the call knows exactly what we're um looking for it feels like you know how you've got something um to say but it's always at the tip of your tongue and it's like right there but you can never put your finger on it I feel like that's exactly where we are right here like we're in the right spot but we just can't right. narrow it down okay yeah it's got to be in here let me go ahead and follow up with you on that one alex yep okay perfect do you have another question uh, i'm done okay anybody else on the call any follow-up questions to maybe anything Alex was talking about or something I've shown so far? Cool beans. All right, we've got a little bit more time. So let me go ahead and at least finish out um, what we're in here building. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and delete the stuff down here. Yep, 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 I know. Um, so go ahead and creating those different values. We can actually have uh, decisions create our Excel document for us here. If you want to make an Excel document, that is. This up here could always be like the new values could actually be coming from a list. Um, say we've got a form with a multi-select dropdown that created a list for um, whatever data field it is. And we actually want to feed that list into an Excel document. That would be a great use of this here. So we could actually go ahead and do like select from flow. Because we're starting out with nothing, I'm actually going to go ahead and do a few different constant variables here so we can actually see what's going on. So this first row, I'm going to make my header row of that Excel document. So I'm actually going to go ahead and tell it to do, um, what's going to do like name and then email addresses. And I can't spell today. There you go, that's better. Um, I'm going to go ahead and set these last two down here to constants just to go ahead and have that Boolean version come through and uh, check those boxes off. And then from here, we're going to scroll back down into that data, Excel and CSV files, and we're going to go ahead and start creating columns now. Set values in column. I always like to make sure I've got everything here just so that way I have clear vis visibility into what that step is supposed to be doing. We're going to connect everything over so that I can actually pick that file. File type, again, we're going to go ahead and do constant. I like to come back and just check to make sure that everything is the same so that we're not having two different um, file types trying to go ahead and reference each other here. The worksheet number should go ahead and be zero. Again, just go ahead and cross reference here. We're looking good. Um, so this row, we're actually going to start in row one now because row zero is our headers. So we're going to do one but still start at column one. The new values for this guy here, again, we're just gonna go ahead and input some information. Our first row or column there was gonna be name. So I'm gonna go ahead and do things like Bailey, we'll do Roger and Zoe. Again, just go ahead and click on these to go ahead and parse those numbers. And then the last one down here, I cheat just a little bit. I'm actually gonna go ahead and copy this stuff here and then paste it. So that way some of those values are still the same. Once we go ahead and connect this to the flow, that input variable um, validation will go ahead and go away. I'm gonna change column to two now. And my variables are gonna go ahead and just be adding on the rest of the email address here. Now we want to actually be able to go ahead and see this. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a form here so I can download this Excel document. And I think, because I was working on it yesterday, I think this guy here. Let me just check, download file, cool. And I can't spell any day of the week. But change that for us here, save it off come back out so I can attach that. And what I'm gonna go ahead and do is that create new Excel right here. Should be able to link it over. And I'm just gonna go ahead and debug this. So it should be taking all, in all that information and allowing us to have an Excel document come through, download the Excel document, and we'll see that we've got the name and email address up here at the top. And then it filled in starting at column one, those names. 
and then our email address is over here. Um, I think in documentation, if you go ahead and reference this, it actually has you go through and it shows you how to um, change the font style, type, color. We can even do like if we wanted this first row of the headers to be a different color, we can actually um, have a step that comes through and changes the background or fill color of the uh, cells inside the Excel document too. So there's a few different ways you can actually manipulate this Excel document once we push it out. Now, what's kind of cool about this is um, I'm gonna go ahead and take, we're gonna leave a checkpoint here. I'm gonna go ahead and delete everything that we've got in here, including my line. And if I wanted to go ahead and actually see it, um, render everything back inside of that Excel document, we can come over to data, Excel and CSV. Um, we're going to go ahead and actually, I'm sorry, create data first so we can bring in that Excel document. Bop, bop. Man, you'd think it was a Monday with the way I'm typing today. We're going to do a file data and we're going to bring in the actual download itself. Done. Please save my changes. All right, so I'm just gonna go ahead and check chat one last time here. Okay, we're looking good over there. All right, just going through and closing stuff out. So now on this side here, if I come down to, um, I can do a CSV to object mapping. Um, and we are gonna keep that one at Excel. So this right here, we can go ahead and if we have a CSV file, we could change it to that, or we can leave it as an Excel document. Take this guy in. And we're gonna go ahead and leave this guy here. Output type, we're actually going to go ahead and do it. counts. Let's see if this works the way I want it to. Yesterday I was working with this as a CSV document, so it might be a little bit different with me trying to do an Excel document, but let's go ahead and test anything and everything. We're going to grab that Excel document there, and then I'm going to go ahead and do the show editing mapper right here. I'm going to edit my data, come through and choose um, which I have name. Yep, and then email address. We can map those guys in, pressing OK. Now, we actually do need to go ahead and map these though, my bad. Um, so from input here, we're gonna go ahead and do the field one. It's gonna go ahead and be the name. Make sure you grab that text value. And then field two, again, grab that text value and do the email address, press OK. And then we should be able to go ahead and now, if we wanted to, we could actually go ahead and create accounts with Inside Decisions. Um, integration. I think it's under internal services. Yeah. Add new account. Um, I'm actually going to throw a for each step inside here because we have a few different lines inside that Excel document. I thought I'd saved it off. Um, so I don't want the done path here. I want the next. No. loop it back around so that way for every line or row inside that Excel document, we've got a new account that's gonna be created. The for each right here is gonna need that collection. So we're gonna grab this output down here. It's just, just called outputs. So I'm gonna go ahead and choose outputs. Filters everything in there. 
And so here for the account, we're going to go ahead and build out that data. Um, again, grabbing in the name, just like we did before, as well as we need the email address. So what we're going to do here is we're going to go ahead and select from flow. The outputs of that for each step is an item. So we're going to grab that item and then go down and look for name, which I always find is usually all right, so the first one is the email address here. So we're going to do email address. Um, I cheat a little bit. I go ahead and copy that first portion and it allows me to type it out. I'm a little bit faster at typing than searching. Um, we're going to go ahead and do a first name here. The name. Um, we can go ahead and pick the group that it can be a member of. If we do constant, it's actually going to allow us to go ahead and select from an entire list of groups that we have housed inside of decisions. I'm going to go ahead and do all users here. And then the password, we're also going to go ahead and do as a constant variable. We're going to go ahead and set it's just admin. All right. Now let's go ahead and debug this and see if they set up for, ah, uh, yes. So, error, a new account. Because it already exists. So it's telling me that one of the um, uh, lines inside of this Excel document has a uh, account already inside of decisions. So we'll have to go ahead and change some different variables inside of the Excel document itself in order for it to render back new accounts here. So let me go ahead and try different names. Um, we're going to try Ellie right here and change this right here to Ellie. Save it off. And then I'm just going to go ahead and drag and drop that new Excel document. So give me just a second here. Bring it over. Let's go ahead and try that one more time. All right, it looks like I might have a few of them because I was going through and doing this a few times yesterday. But what should happen is it should actually go ahead and make new accounts for us here. Um, and we'll be able to go ahead and see that inside of our system security and accounts here. Um, I know we're kind of at that marker where we can go ahead and wrap things up here. Um, so this is just one of those things that I've been working on to go ahead and kind of get a little bit more familiar with Excel documents as well as CSV files and how we can actually manipulate those inside of decisions. Um, Alex, Ben, do either one of you guys have any questions? Hey, Ashley. It's Mark Klein. Hey, yeah, Mark. Hey, um, and this might help out Alex. There's a couple of ways to um, and I don't know if I heard the whole question, Alex, so I apologize. There's a couple of ways to hide the folder tree um, and have it also collapsed. Um, it's all in the portal setting options um, under system and then settings. You can edit the portal settings and there are quite a few options in there. Just for, yeah. And if, um, you said it was under which um, tab? So if you scroll down just a tad, right there, um, you just passed a couple of those Boolean check marks. Yeah, so at the left-hand side bar there, you can suppress the folders by unchecking show folders. And then if you scroll farther down, Ashley, mm -hmm. um, you can also by default have the folder tree collapsed and I know there's a lot of settings in there but I think it's um very far down yeah so I guess um this introduces the idea of uh like what I'm trying to accomplish is is that um that they 
users who are using different, uh, well, basically my dashboard don't see the, um, the, the left panel. But if you're to log on as administrator, like I would want you to be able to see that. So if we edit the portal settings, that will be global to everyone. Is that what I'm understanding? That's what it looks like to me, yeah. I'm actually, um, I just, as you were asking that question, I went into documentation to uh, understand more of the limitations. Okay. Okay, cool. Thank you for that. Sure. Yeah, thank you so much, Mark. Thanks, Ashley. All right, fellas, um, Maria, Sabrina, whoever's on, um, are we good to go ahead and conclude today's Lunch and Learn? Um, yes, I was just wondering if Mark could post the link so that uh, we can grab it. Yeah, and if nothing else, yep. I can go grab it I, too. Mm -hmm. I can post it in the chat. Yeah. Yeah, if you can post it in the chat and then I'll go ahead and um, keep that for our records. Got it. Okay. All right. Well, uh, that will conclude today's Lunch and Learn. Thank you, everybody, for joining, and uh, we'll see you next week. Thank you, everyone. Okay, thanks.